Hello, uh, Glenn Stephen here from Greening Australia. Uh, here we are at one of our uh, TGA 8 sites, Graham Groves Place, um, doing a bit of monitoring. Um, we're trying out a brand new uh, application called Fulcrum to do our monitoring this year. And um, yeah, so we're just doing a 25 meter plot counting different species and how many survived and how many have germinated. And uh, so we're just beautiful day east of the Stirling Ranges doing some monitoring. So was this formerly cropland? Yes, but it didn't. It didn't. Uh, the crops weren't working here anymore. So mm -hmm. he decided to put it into trees. He wasn't. Didn't really have a lot of faith in it. But um, we're trying to change his mind, and we're getting some really good results. So. He's hoping that if it works, um, he can do more of it and show it to his neighbours and his neighbours will take it up as well. And what would the outcome be? Like bush, bushland as yeah, was previously well, here. I mean, when was this land cleared? Like 19... This was cleared yeah, probably 40 or 50 years ago. Mm. And um, although we're not putting exactly what was here before, where you know the landscape has changed like the soil has changed um, it's much saltier than it was originally this probably would have been Mallee Heath or um, yeah Mallee Heath before and now it's we're gonna have to change it to, to you know more salt tolerant sort of um, vegetation but um, the main thing is we're, we just want to keep the, the water table um, down and stop the area from getting in any worse and um, yeah so we put in some really hardy salt tolerant species which are going to survive it's still uh, some mallees in there but it's uh, there's a lot there's a lot of mort in there um, eucalyptus platypus and a few more alocasurinas because they're much salt tolerant um, he told me that the the water table under here is almost as salty as salt water Really? Seawater. And it's become that way sort of yeah, yeah. since? Yeah, because the water the... table has just kept coming up and um, yeah. and pushed the salt up with it. So yeah. it's it's changed from its original state, so we've had to, you know, uh, change the species mix slightly to suit, or to survive. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be a good result. Um, originally he said that um, he couldn't see anything. I mean, uh, farmers, they're used to looking at, you know, annual annual stuff and weeds and, weeds and stuff, but they're not used to, um, well, they don't know what natives look like. So once I come in and showed him what they were, um, he was quite satisfied that it was working. And he was really disappointed that he couldn't be here today um, because he was... He was keen to see how it was all going. You were pointing out one down here to me. Yeah, yeah, so these have grown really fast. Uh, so these are eucalypts here, and that's a little acacia metafolia. Um, yeah, so th these must have just found a little, you know, pocket of moisture or nutrient, and they've grown much faster than the rest of them. Most of them are around this size. That's a little metaleuca there. When were they planted? Uh, in August this year, so that's only, yeah, about 10 weeks. Mm. So it's only about 10 weeks old, which is uh, extremely fast growing. So what's out here is, is planted 10 weeks ago? Yeah. From the direct, what you were calling direct seeding? Direct seeding. Which I hadn't heard of before coming out here as well, where you actually have a machine and you... Yeah, you, yeah, you, so it's, uh, it's a new machine developed by Jeff Woodall and uh, it's a precision seeder, so um, you could probably, it's just like the ones that they use to plant wheat, but it's more precise, um, because uh, when you're planting wheat, it doesn't really matter if there's slight variation in seed depth, whereas uh, native seed, it really needs to be precise all the way through to get a successful result. So this little seeder, uh, yeah, just plants everything precisely at the same depth, whatever depth you you choose um, we usually try and plant these at about seven millimeters 
below the soil surface. The acacias are usually a little bit deeper because they're hard seeded and bigger seeds. The bigger the seed, the, the, the deeper you plant it basically. Um, yeah, so the machine you can set all that. You can set you know, the depth of the bigger seeds and the depth of the smaller seeds. So we usually put in two different mixes which are coarse and fines and um, yeah and that gets, gets a pretty good result um, yeah but uh, it's it's a new machine um, we bought ours in about 2011 traditionally we used to plant a lot of seedlings but now we have we've moved to direct seeding because it's just you know much more bang for your buck um, to put in a seedling it's about a dollar to put in direct seeding it probably it's probably about just a few cents per germinant so um, and you only need one person to do direct seeding with seedlings you usually need a whole seedling team mm -hmm. so um, yeah we've we much prefer this method and um, so far it's just it's, it's almost impossible to fail everything everything works yeah you just can't go wrong it's great So here we are on the Walker property. Um, we did re-veg here last year. Um, this is north of the Stirling, so it's quite a dry climate here. Um, we've done about 40 hectares here um, in the last year, and it's, it's all germinated and looking nice. And we're planning on doing some more re-veg next year on this area um, down here. Uh, it's quite a larger area. There's about 150 hectares that we're going to do next year. Um, this year is a bit of a trial. Um, this farm was um, recently purchased by Colin Walker, and yeah, it was a wreck. It was owned by an older guy who died, and um, and Colin bought it quite cheap because it was quite uh, there wasn't much pasture on it. Uh, it was it's very sand dunal. So there was a lot of erosion. Um, the areas that we've done here uh, were basically just sand dunes and not much crop grows on it at all. So he wants to stabilise that area and use it for shelter for his sheep. And, and um, yeah, so he's doing big strips of sand dunes all the way from the highway up to the top of the hill. So this was seeded, was it? Yeah, this is all direct seeding as well. And this was a sand dune before that? Yeah, it was just sand dunes, so we drove around these. He's recently fenced them, we drove around these areas and decided which areas he wanted to um, have re on and we drove around it, he fenced it and then we had to do a slightly di different technique because it's sand dunes, we had to... Pre it wasn't always sand dunes, was it? It was, it was native vegetation yeah, it was and then it was cleared in the 70s or something? Yeah, something along those lines. It shouldn't have been cleared in the first place. And like, if you look on Google Maps, you can see a lot of the other sand dunes which haven't been cleared. And, you know, they're still quite healthy. And there's a lot of it's just low-lying shrubs and stuff growing on them and salt bush. But, um, but this was cleared. And, you know, if you look on the maps, you can see the others which have got vegetation on it. And then all of a sudden you get these big white strips um, from the aerial imagery and um, so yeah they're, they're all vegetated around here except for on this farm so um, something needed to be done and um, yeah so we've um, we agreed with the farmer to re-veg them and um, yeah we'll probably probably get a pretty decent result judging from the monitoring that we've just done uh, what was the monitoring telling you and and out here as well you were saying yeah, because all over this farm, so there's there's a big patch, like you see a big sand dune over there, yeah. there's another sand dune over here, Yeah, right. and then there's this big strip, and then there's also the, the top of this hill, which is all sand dune as well, and mm. there's strips everywhere through this farm, so he's going to keep using the, the bits which aren't deep sands, he's going to keep using them as pasture, so he's going to be running his sheep around the sand dunes, and... Yeah, and then hopefully have these strips here for shelter and um, and feed in you know in rough weather. Um, yeah, but the monitoring is quite good. We had to use the technique that we used 
um, was pre-scalping and uh, because if we didn't pre-scalp, we pre-scalp a couple of months before we sow and that way it's stabilised enough. What does that mean? Um, so the machine when you're, when you're planting, uh, it scalps and then sows at the same time but uh, it, so What's when you scalp, when you scalp, mm. you scalp off the top layer of soil mm. and it gets rid of that, that weed sort of soil layer and harvests, harvests water as well. So it just basically puts a divot in the ground to the water to collect in mm. and um, yeah, and clears off all those, all those weed seeds on top. And um, so we had to do that, but because it's sand dunes, uh, it's really unstable. So once you've pre-scalped, the wind blows all the sand back into the rows. Mm -hmm. So we sort of had to wait for that period to to pass. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So and then once once it stabilises, then we come in and seed it. Right. Wonderful. Yeah. And then that way, you know, once you've seeded it. It's stabilised enough in order for the for the seed to for the seed to grow. Interesting. I'm here at the Spriggs property. Uh, we're northwest of the Stirlings now. Um, we were approached by Ben Sprigg who wanted to revegetate this area um, because he couldn't get very good results with his cropping and stuff, and he's very uh, conservation-minded as well. So he was happy to to let this bit of land go um, back to trees and yeah just doing our monitoring getting quite good results there's good soil here um, so um, sort of expected to get pretty decent results um, some seedling planting happened here as well which was done by uh, one of our partners Green Skills they had some seedlings left over and they wanted to plant them somewhere so they've um, planted them in this plot and um, yeah, it's all going quite nicely. Mm. So it was formerly a field like up there, was it? Or was yeah. this just barren? Well, there, this this has started going salty. Uh. So um, because it's quite a low lying area and there's a creek that runs through there. Mm. Um, so a lot of water is getting waterlogged in here. And they've tried, they've tried quite a few things in order to stop it from getting waterlogged. They dug in a big drain and stuff like that, and and um, and that did help a little bit, but it it didn't stop it altogether. Um, yeah, so the main reason why they wanted to revegetate it is because it was just salty, and they weren't getting the production that they were getting up on the higher areas. So with the plants in, with the natives in, once that happens, how does that prevent the saltiness from? Well, the, the, the salinity occurs when the water table rises mm -hmm. and um, yeah, and it brings the salt up with it. So over millions of years, so the history of the world or whatever, over millions of years, uh, rain's been falling on the, on, the, on the land and it's just got a minor component of salt in it, but over millions of years, all that salt's accumulated down, deep down underneath the soil surface. And then, um, once we cut all the trees down, the water table rose because there was no trees there to suck the water up and, and keep the water table low, and it's brought the salt up with it. So it's no longer subsoil salinity; it's above ground water logging and all the issues that come along with it. And uh, yeah, so that's the problem. We cut down all the trees. So by putting the trees back, we're keeping the water table low and the salts. Um, down below and um, and eventually more rain will fall on it and start washing the, the salt that has been washed up uh, it'll start washing all that back down to the subsoils. So this was another process of the direct seeding method direct that you were seeding. talking about yeah. before. Yep, all direct seeding, all these uh, sites are direct seeded. Um, only The only seedlings that were put in were seedlings that you know, other groups wanted to put in there just to enhance the project just as you know some have been fenced um, by other groups in order to enhance the project yeah this program that we're doing is only for revegetation and um, we've chosen the direct seeding method because we can get more area done for less money 
and um, yeah, and any any enhancements have been done uh, externally by other groups. Yeah, but can't wait. Can't wait to see how it goes. So you're able to measure a drop in in the level of salt in the soil. As it, it has been done before. There's been some research that's been done that shows that over time um, salt leaches out of the surface soil and, and well salinity reduces over time. Um, but we, we don't do any of those measurements. Mm. We just uh, we we just read the research and and hope that it happens everywhere. And you were saying there's then this there's obviously some weeds here as well. So the the next step is that it's sprayed for weeds, but that spray is selected to only kill the weeds, not the yeah, natives. Be, yeah, because the the funding only pays for the reveg. Mm -hmm. The landholder is expected to do all the weed control. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so we consult them and uh, and tell them what sort of chemicals they can use and stuff without hurting the natives and so this site will because it's mainly grasses um, we'll be um, notifying the landholder and say look you need to spray these weeds out um, and he can use a grass selective mm -hmm. so it's a it's a chemical which only affects a certain group of plants and so in this case the grasses are the problem so he can spray out the grasses and um, because we didn't direct seed any grasses, it won't affect any of the natives. Okay, um, now we're at a site called Cheraldton. Um, it's a corporate farming property, and um, and they wanted to fix up you know, similar sort of problems as everyone else, the salinity issues. Um, yeah, so this was cropped last year, but they decided that they weren't really getting the yields they, they needed, so they decided to um, put it into trees. And uh, yeah, so we come out and, and um, marked it out, and they put the fence in, and we come in and direct seeded it. Uh, this property is more northwest of the Stirlings than the other property, so uh, it's basically the furthest property, one of the furthest properties northwest that we've ever done. And um, yeah, and we put in a bunch of salt tolerant species uh, and a lot of yates because it's quite clay um, soils. And um, yeah, once again, the farmer hasn't sprayed the weeds like he should have so um, we'll be giving, consulting him telling him to spray out the grasses and there's also a lot of red-legged earth mites which chew the little germinates as well so we'll give it a bug spray as well um, but otherwise we're still more than enough meeting our, our minimum stem rate and um, it's not as not as nice as it could be uh, or we'd like it to be but it's still going to be a good result. Yeah, so um, yeah, pretty happy. Uh, we are at a property called Corner Cup, which is one of the forestry owned properties um, which we're doing green veg on, one of many. And uh, so this site here uh, used to be all bulrushes and um, they were keen to get rid of the bulrushes and put in some trees. So uh, we come in and did direct seeding at this site once they burned it. So they burnt it and they sprayed it and, um, and then we come in and sowed it. And at the moment we're look it's looking quite good. Uh, we're getting a very high stem rate. Um, good germination, so I'm confident this site's going to be very successful. And actually, uh, right over the, this uh, this bank here is the Corner Cup Lake. So it's a good spot out there now. Oh, it's pretty high at the moment. There's over a hundred thousand stems a hectare of germinants, but we'll lose a lot of those over summer. Uh, yeah, so that, that's just the way it goes, unfortunately. You'll just get immense competition and 
Um, yeah, but obviously it's, it was good timing. It rained straight after I sowed it. And we got great germination probably because of that, but because it's quite sandy and things are dry out a little bit, we'll lose a lot of those. Um, and probably end up with still a decent stem density, I'd say, and a good result, as long as everything else goes well. Uh, we are here at, uh, at a property called Weir, uh, another property owned by a forestry company. And uh, this is the second year we've done reveg here. Uh, it's right next to the Prongrups, Prongrup Ranges. And um, we sowed this in pretty late. We sowed this one in late August as well. Um, so everything's still quite small. And it was very wet. I got bogged a lot. Um, I got bogged just over there. I got really bogged up on the other side. And um, yeah. Getting quite good results though. Um, not as great as the other forestry property, but still very good results. And um, everything's still quite small though, so hopefully it makes it through summer. Other than that, I was, uh, pretty happy with the work and fingers crossed for a good result. How does your app work? Um, it's already a so Fulcrum is a, it's already, the app is already made, but it's sort of, it's an app that helps you create like forms. So you can customize your own form and have it on the app. So uh, how can I explain this? So you can basically put a label, put labels all over your app. So you, it basically gives you an empty space and you can put labels all through it. So you can say a site name and then you can go through what species or any labels. Um, you can have multiple choice so you can you can add labels in as multiple choice and um, yeah so it's basically a customizable form app where you can where you can build your own form and, and do it all on online using your mobile phone and then upload it to a cloud. Yeah. Um, so we're using that for the first time this year and so far it's good because we don't have to carry around any paper we don't have to use pens we don't have to um, work out what our scribbles said later on or anything like that it's all digitized and um, done for us and there's no double handling so it's so far it's so good there's a couple of little tweaks we need to do um, this is only a trial run but um, so far it's proven itself I reckon and um, we'll be definitely using it more in the future. It's good. Yeah. As opposed to a job that's, what's the bottom line? Yeah, that's right. How much money did you make? Yeah. So what's the bottom line? Yeah. How's your wildlife corridor you know, developing? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's uh, totally different. It's very good. Yeah. Sometimes we 